Today we will be discussing shoulder dislocations, starting with some basic anatomy, discussions about different types of dislocations, as well as information about how to assess the shoulder, both clinically and radiologically. We will also discuss ways in which we can reduce the shoulder. We will start by discussing basic anatomy in three parts, bones, muscle and ligaments, and other nerves. The shoulder consists of four main joints, the sternoclavicular, acromioclavicular, scapulaclavicular, and glenohumeral joints. In this video, we will focus on the glenohumeral joint, which is a ball and socket joint articulating the head of the humerus and the flat surface of the scapula, known as the glenoid surface. This joint has the greatest range of motion in the body and is therefore prone to dislocation due to the shallow nature of the glenoid surface, which allows for increased mobility. When looking at the muscles and ligaments and soft tissues, these are, provide an additional stability to the joint. The integrity of the rotator cuff muscles are essential in maintaining the correct positioning of the humeral head. Damage in these muscles could result in decreased stability of the joint. Capsular ligaments are also adding additional support, and the inferior glenohumeral ligament is the most frequently injured ligament in anterior dislocations. It is essential to remember the location of surrounding neurovasculature. In the shoulder, one must remember the axillary nerve, which is prone to damage and dislocation. Assess and document the neurovasculature of a patient when beginning the examination before attempting any reduction techniques. Pay particular attention to the axillary nerve function by testing sensation over the deltoid muscle. We will now discuss the types of dislocations, of which there are mainly two, anterior and posterior dislocation. Depending on the textbook you are reading, statistics show that over 90 to 95 percent of, of shoulder dislocations are anterior dislocations, of which the mechanism of injury in this dislocation is usually forcible abduction and external rotation of the arm, which can result from a fall on the outstretched arm. This results in the anterior displacement of the humeral head, which will then be lying below the coracoid process. On examination, the arm would be supported by the patient. They would have flattened contours of the shoulder, fullness below the coracoid anteriorly, and painful limitation of all movement. Posterior dislocations are less common and more commonly missed. This is caused by forced internal rotation or a blow to the front of the shoulder. They may be seen following seizures or episodes of electrocution due to muscular contraction. And on examination, fullness posteriorly or an emptiness anteriorly may be seen, and the patient could be unable to abduct or externally rotate their arm. We will now be looking at the shoulder examination. As with any joint, it's important to remember to screen the joint above, in this case the neck, and the joint below, the elbow. A general examination should always be done with every patient, as well as a neurovascular assessment of the affected limb as mentioned earlier. When faced with a patient with a shoulder dislocation, it's important to think, look, feel, and move. On look, Look for any obvious swelling, as well as the previously mentioned clinical features. On feel, establish any areas of tenderness along the glenohumeral joint, as well as feeling for temperature differences between the two shoulders as for possible vascular compromise. For move, do a basic screen of the shoulder initially, then focus on the affected side. There are a few special tests for shoulder dislocation or instabilities. These include an anterior apprehension test and a surprise test for anterior dislocation. For posterior dislocation, a posterior apprehension test can be done. For inferior dislocation or multidirectional dislocation, a sulca sign can be elicited on clinical examination. To confirm your clinical diagnosis, an x-ray can be done. This radiological investigation requires three views an AP view, a lateral scapula, and a modified axillary. For anterior dislocations, on an AP view, the humeral head is displaced medially and overlies the glenoid. For posterior dislocations, on the AP x-ray, it can be hard at first to identify. However, the widening of the glenohumeral joint space can be noted. Typically described on x-ray is a light bulb sign, which is forced internal rotation of the humeral head as it dislocates posteriorly. 
What is also important is to comment on the presence of associated fractures such as the hill sass lesion, a posterior lateral head of the humeral depression from an anterior dislocation, as well as a bony bank heart, which is the detachment of an anterior inferior labrum of the glenoid as a direct result of an anterior dislocation. Lastly, we will describe and later demonstrate some of the used methods of shoulder dis um, dislocation. We will be demonstrating the following methods. The Hippocratic method, both with and without an assistant, which is the preferred method. The coach's method. And lastly, the modified mulch. I repeat once again to document your patient's neurovascular status and clear any possible fractures before doing any of these maneuvers. Coach's method. With the patient lying down, take hold of the wrist and the elbow. Bend the affected arm at 90 degrees at the elbow and abduct it against the body. Slowly, externally rotate between 70 and 80 degrees until resistance is felt. Lift the externally rotated arm in the sagittal plane as far forward as possible. Now internally rotate the shoulder to bring the patient's head towards the opposite side. The humeral head should now slip back into the glenoid fossa without pain. With the Hippocratic method, start with the patient on their back and take a hold of the affected arm and hand. Abduct the arm and now place your heel in the patient's axilla. This will act as a fulcrum while the arm is abducted. If an assistant is available, then the one doctor can apply traction to the affected arm whilst the shoulder is abducted. The assistant doctor can apply firm counter traction to the chest by placing a folded sheet under the patient. With the modified mulch technique, stand on the same side as the affected arm whilst the patient lies on their back. Place your fingers over the affected shoulder so as to steady the displaced humeral head by bracing it against your thumb. Next, hold the hand and abduct and externally rotate the patient's arm into the overhead position, whilst fixing the humeral head so that it does not move from the dislocated position. Then gently push the humeral head back into the glenoid fossa with your thumb and internally rotate the shoulder to relocate it.